In Cakewalk by BandLab, there are many plugins that you can use to make your song sound great. There is a simple technique to mixing that many people overlook. I'm right in front of a project that I created a few days ago, uh, and I was just kind of going with the flow and just came up with this little groove. Now, I need to go about trying to mix this thing, but I'm not going to use any plugins whatsoever. It all starts right here, right in the faders, and you got to figure out which one should be louder or you need to adjust the gain level because you need to find out what's most important in your mix to you. What's the main three ingredients of your mix or your song that needs to stand out more than anything else. In this case, depending on what style you're doing, if it's an instrumental like this, I definitely need my bass drum to stand out. I'm going to start with my drums, and right now I have six tracks for my drums. I didn't finish this thing. It's just something I started grooving with, but this is what the drums sound like if I solo that track folder. Okay, and you get the idea. Now, notice that all of my faders are right at zero. My gain on each of these tracks are the same. They're all at zero decibels. I want to go about trying to get this as level as possible without trying to add all these other plugins because the best thing is being able to hear these instruments and make sure that they are cutting through the mix. So I really want the bass drum to stand out. I want the snare to stand out. So I'm going to mix around those two. Those are my most important things for this song. So here we go. All right. I got my bass drum. And I got my snare, so I'm going to start on the bass drum. All I'm doing is I'm going to keep the gain there. I'm going to listen to the bass drum by itself, all right, so I can see exactly what it sounds like. Okay. Now, there is effects that are built in on the TTS because I'm using TTS for this. Now, of course, there's effects on this. Now. I could take the effects out if I don't really want them in, but I will leave them in there. But I mean, I'm not doing any additional plugins other than this. All right, what I'm gonna do first is mess with my gains. I'm not gonna worry about my faders right now. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put everything back to zero. And I wanna go ahead and turn this gain down because I don't want it to start clipping. Now it's okay if it goes into the yellow some, but I don't want it to go all the way up to the red. Cool, I'm gonna bring the snare in. Snare is a little bit too hot. I'm going to take the snare gain down some. Now I've got this snare tuned very high. I actually went into TTS to adjust it to give it high frequency. Now, keep in mind that sometimes when you're dealing with instruments, if you pitch them a certain way, they will cut through the mix a little bit more. So the higher something is in frequency range, the easier it is going to be for you to hear it. Um, I'm not going to worry about any low pass filters or anything like that. I'm just going to keep it the way it is. If I pan it all the way over, that's what it sounds like. Okay. All right, let's add in my bass guitar. And I got two basses on here. I got a sub bass and I have uh, SI bass guitar. So, okay, this is my sub bass. Okay, and I'm kind of okay with it being the way it is because it's not peaking or anything. Kind of adds a little bit more body and lows to it. This is bass. All right, I'm gonna bring the gain down on this a little bit. Trying to gain down some on that. And I don't really want my keyboards to be right in the center. I'm going to pan it some. Okay, pan at 34%. And then I am going to take the gain down a little bit. Now, what I'm really looking for is that I want to be able to hear all the instruments. So this is a good test to do is... Uh, a few different things. You can definitely turn the volume all the way down on all the instruments, faders, and you can slide them up one by one until you really get to the point where you say, oh, I can hear it. 
then that's cool. Then you know you're at a good level. But it shouldn't get to the point where any instrument is more louder than the other one. They should all be clear uh, dynamically, you know, and frequency-wise, they should be clear. So that means you sh they should have their own spectrum where they cut through the mix. Another thing I like to do as well is I like to bring the master volume all the way down, and I can bring it all the way down, and I wanna listen to say like, okay, I bring it all the way down, and I'm listening for, can I hear everything? So at this low volume, you can hear how low this is, I can hear, I hear the drums, I hear all the percussion instruments, I hear the keyboards, I hear the bass, I even still hear the sub. Good. And I know you're probably looking like, okay, all you're doing is just turning down the gains, but you're not doing anything with the faders yet. Uh, because I want to save the faders for last, because keep in mind that when I add all these extra plugins later on, which would be the next step, right now I want to get the mix right without adding any type of effects whatsoever, except for the effects that come with the actual sound that I'm using. Because if I can't get it to sound good without adding any extra effects, then what's the point of doing that? Uh, the effects are supposed to enhance what already sounds good or to make it sound better. Like for instance, if I'm using compression on a vocal, I can't go about using compression on the vocal if the vocal sounds like trash. If the vocal's gotta sound good first, otherwise the compression is not gonna do much for it at all. Get those two together. Now what I'm doing on this piece of music, uh, this is called Just a Tune, okay? So this is called Just a Tune. It might be another song that might, it might make it to uh, distribution one day, I don't know, but I, I just came up with it. It was just something I was like, oh, let's make something. And what I had in mind when I was actually working on a production for this, just making this little snippet a piece of music was that I wanted everything to have its own space rhythmically too as well. So you're gonna notice that none of the rhythms, like lay, they might touch with each other every now and then, but most of them are independent of their own. So when you get that, it makes it easier to mix everything. So keep that in mind when you're working on productions. I could put that with the drums and the bass, and then you get this. And that sim two part is more like a melody, so I do have it standing out a little bit more. And I might pull it back center, but. Okay, yeah, I'm using jazz guitar from Contact as well. All right, so another another rhythm, right? It's real simple. You can hear a little fret noise in there. Okay, and it's even not even quite in time. I left some of this stuff out of time. Some of it's quantized to swing. Some of it's quantized, totally different. So, but uh, I just did some things with it because you don't want everything to always be perfect. Uh, so that's the lead guitar. And then I got guitar two. I think I did some on guitar two. I don't know. Yeah, it's hot. Okay. All right, and this is TTS, like a 12 string guitar or something like that. I might pan that that way, all the way that way. And I might pan this this way. Let's see. All right, let's hear what it sounds like. I'm looking at my mixes, I'm looking at each track, and I'm like, okay, no tracks have any red, you know, it's okay if they get a little yellow, you know, but if they get too hot, it's gonna sound distorted, it's not gonna give me any room to wiggle later on, uh, and even this master, I could turn the gain down on this too as well.
All right, you all. And this is how you go about just getting a simple mix. We're just using the faders and using the gain and using the pan feature that's on Cakewalk by BandLab. Now, this is just one step. This doesn't mean, oh, yeah, we're just going to stop there. But if I wanted to put it like this, then I can take it and bring it into some other software or I can take it to um, someone that can master it, and I can say, hey, you know, make what you know work your magic with this or i can bring it back into cakewalk and say hey you know now it's a two track and now i can add some extra effects to it and get it the way i really want or i can go to each track and yeah let me add the compression let me put more bottom in on the drums and stuff like that but if you're not sure how to do all of that just stick with this for now stick with this because this will be better then you go on and messing everything up because adding all those extra plugins could sometimes make it worse. Professional audio engineers will know how to do this method because the main thing is to create a mix that is similar to the intentions of the producer. So if you're a producer and you had a certain sound that you were looking for and you really like the way the bass drum sounded already, well, you don't need the mixer to go in there and start messing with everything. Now the mixer may try to clean some things up that need fixing, but for the most part, it's good to leave things alone. Just leave, leave well enough alone as they say. So definitely consider this when you're in your mixing project. If you like content like this, definitely consider sharing, liking and commenting below and definitely feel free to subscribe because my intent on this channel is to help you grow in your music career through tutorials on songwriting, digital audio workstations, and et cetera.